On the Chess Today show today, there's certainly nothing bigger to discuss than the news about Gary Kasparov, the potential return of the king to the chess board in a professional setting. Obviously, he's done tandem events, he's done exhibition events, but never has he played a serious FIDE-rated event, whether it's Rapid or Blitz or not, a FIDE-rated event since his retirement in 2005. Uh, your thoughts? How excited are you about this? Is that going to make you? Is that make you more likely to tune into the Rapid and Blitz, especially given that the big name lacking from the Magna, uh, from the event in St. Louis, the Rapid and Blitz portion was going to be Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen will be playing the classical portion of chess in St. Louis, but not the Rapid and Blitz. So without that name, is Gary Kasparov filling the wild card spot enough to make you? Uh, excited or did it not matter to you, you were going to watch anyway. So uh, so let's do it. As uh, as uh, White Raven X said, kids, sit down. Daddy is home. Let's start the Chess Today show since pretty much nothing else matters right now uh, in the world than, than discussing these top topics and, of course, solving the daily puzzle. So first and foremost, we jump into the daily puzzle and uh, and let's let's get that party started. Here we go. The Daily Puzzle. The first thing we do on the Chess Today show, what do we got today? We've got a win on the spot. I'm guessing the move is going to be Queen A8 check, and after the King takes, King to C7 with checkmate to follow, B7 and B8 queen. Doesn't look like anything else um, is sufficient for white, given that black is about to queen, uh, about to queen the pawns, both the B1 and the A1 pawn. So, this is a tactic that pops out at you when you've seen promotion combinations before, right? You've seen, uh, you know, you've seen this this uh, this idea where you you get the king in a mating net, and so you're not just promoting a pawn and winning the race that happens in in pawn endings where both sides try to get a queen, but you're checkmating the king immediately. Because the key thing about the, the what makes this combination work is not that you're getting a queen because black is getting a queen too but that you're actually checkmating white, uh, or sorry, checkmating black with promotion. So this is actually a useful practical uh, thing as we let it instant replay here for us. The thing, the thing I just want to highlight here that makes this practical is that there are many end games where there's a race of some kind, both sides trying to promote, whether it's a rook and pawn ending, queen and pawn ending, minor piece ending, where often the calculation process is stopped once you promote. So you're calculating in your head. I go there, he goes there, I go there, he goes there, I go there, she goes there, whatever, right? Yeah, and and we, we, we go to the line where one side promotes and we sort of stop our calculations because we assume that's game over. Whether it's them getting a queen and we're like, okay, we can't go for that line because we lose, or we get a queen and we just assume it's game over. When often the most devastating tactics in an endgame occur, uh, occur directly after a promotion. So, okay, this is a very basic puzzle and we'll let it play again. Not something that took us a ton of effort to solve, but the the idea that it should cement in your thinking process is a useful one because if you're stopping your calculation in variations, basically at promotion, you might be doing your games a disservice to look for a critical tactic. Sometimes you promote and then you skewer the king and queen and you win, or or like here, there's a, there's a mating net. Sometimes the king is in a lucky position where it can't be checked for just a couple moves and that allows you to do something after a promotion. So build that habit in your chest that you don't stop your calculations after promotion and you will be better for it. That's going to be, uh, you know, the daily, we'll call it the daily double. We got, we got daily puzzle, and then Danny's tip is the daily double. Hashtag Jeopardy, eat your heart out. Heart out. Can, can Alex Trebek really come after me for that one? Right? Can I get in trouble for stealing the daily double? Probably. I probably shouldn't do that, right? Okay. Thanks for the tip, yeah. All right, well, now it's, uh, it's our time to discuss the, the, the hot topic of the day. That's what we do on the Chess Today show after we solve the daily puzzle. I pose the question to all of you in chat, and now I'm going to jump into the chat and see if you've answered me. Does Gary Kasparov's return make you more likely to watch the St. Louis Rapid and Blitz? Is it old news? Is this the greatest thing that's ever happened to chess in the history of chess? What do you got? So I'm going to start with the Chess TV chat today before we get into Twitch. Uh, hi everybody! What's up, E Dog ninety nine, um, Cash Kana, Pawn in their game twenty nine, Leela. I can't read everyone's usernames. Just want to see what people people have to say about this. So, overall, um, Pawn in the in their game says he'd much rather see a human than a bot. 
I think that is true, right? You're saying you'd rather see Kasparov as much more fun than to watch than Deep Blue. That's true. I mean, for sure. Well, that would be funny, right? If eventually these tournaments, the wild card, that's a cool idea. What if we did a closed event? Or what if, like, for our speed chess championship next year, what if the wild card is like stockfish down a night? What? That's a great idea. Will somebody make a note of that idea? Like, what if we, what if we create an event with the world's top players and the wild card is the best computer, but we give it a material odds that we deem equal just to see what happens? How would you not tune in for that? I mean, I know Kasparov is cool, but I would tune in for that. I would tune in if the wild card at one of these major events was, was, a, uh, was a top engine. Um, Real quote, real quote by Deep Blue from Bond in their game. I shall crush the human race just like I crushed Kasparov. Yeah, I, I think that's probably true. Um, so John HS says, this is the biggest news since Magus Carlson broke Gary Kasparov's rating record. That's big news. It's a big deal. There's a lot of comments in this article, 123 to be exact, and it hasn't even been live for more than 12 hours. So obviously, I think a lot of people, look at that. We got our meme going. That's awesome. Let's get Turtle Tycoon a diamond membership. Anybody who makes a meme, I'm a sucker for memes. I'm a sucker for gifts, and I'm a sucker for memes. So let's get Turtle Tycoon a diamond membership. Um, somebody says he thought Kasparov was an American. Liam Shez. All right, anyway, a lot of comments here. I think for the most part, I think people agree. I mean, obviously, Magnus Carlsen is the star, but this line right here is how people feel. Kasparov is still the biggest personality in chess, right? He may even still be the biggest name. I think if you talk to people on the streets, what do they say? They remember two names even more than Carlson still to this date. I mean, sorry, Magnus, but the two names they remember are, you know you've crossed the line in terms of celebrity when people remember who you are without remembering your name. They say, who was that American who beat the Russians and the Soviet? I, whatever. I remember he was on the cover of Time magazine. Or, oh, Bobby Fischer, right? Where's Bobby Fischer? And then who was the Russian who lost to the computer? Gary Kasparov. So Kasparov and Fisher are really the two names that people know their name, even if they don't know their name. And Magnus Carlsen probably hasn't really crossed that line yet in terms of status. So, um, okay, so this is cool. Let me check in on the Twitch chat and, uh, and see how people feel. Um, Biden in the chess.com TV chat says he doesn't know why he chose rapid and lits over classical. We've actually already reached out. This will be breaking news on tomorrow's chess center. We've actually already talked to Kasparov's team. And, and I can say that um, right now there really aren't any plans for Kasparov to play classical chess. I think it's, it's rapid and blitz precisely because it's a little more casual, a little more fun. Yes, it's rated. Yes, it matters. That's why it's a big deal because it actually could affect the grand chess tour standings. But I, I think... Um, I think uh, the, the chances of him coming into classical chess, given the news that we were told by the Kasparov team, probably pretty low. So you can check out Chess Center and see what Peter Dockers had to say tomorrow. Won't get into that, but um, but okay, I can say that that's probably true. So the Twitch chat, not nearly as busy as it normally is. Um, we got uh, Dennis Slaner, we got Drash KP, we got HT1992. Um, uh, PKGN says he was going to tune in anyway, but Kasparov makes it more exciting. Um, Crypt seems to agree with me. He feels like Carlson is still a pretty big personality. I agree. I think Carlson is a big star. He has an allure to him. It's a sex appeal. I mean, celebrities want to be around people that are like kind of the smartest people in the world. But, but I also think... Um, Watch me slay chess again. I just love that. We're going to get that guy a diamond membership. Um, but I think, I think Kasparov has, um, has, has an impact on a cultural level that nobody else does, to be honest. I mean, Kasparov is a politician. He's an author. He has influence, you know? So I think it's, I think it's just huge. Um, uh, Izoda111 says, Kasparov will probably do better than Jabava did as the wild card. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I agree with you. Can we all just appreciate the pain that Jabava went through? I know, we, I know it's more news than we normally like, but can we just... Can we just appreciate real quick, uh, you know, let me, let me get some more news here from the homepage. Can we just appreciate real quick how bad Jabava played in Loven? I mean, he lost like every single game, right? <laughs> it was so sad to watch. It was so hard. Let's find the one game, the game that is just like absolutely heartbreaking. It was a capper, the capper by Jabava. What was this game? Let's find it. Uh, come on. Come on. Here it is. Is this it? No. He actually won this game against Kromnik, so that's nice. Uh, this was it right here. So did you see this game, everybody? In this position, there is, there is one way for White to lose this position. 
Okay, the rook can go anywhere here, and white is the one pushing for a win. He plays rook to c5. Oh my god, right? And then king to d6, and the rook is just trapped. Like, one move. Rook c5, king d6, and the rook is trapped. He just resigned, but obviously rook c8, bishop d7 check. That was, like, mind-blowing. It, it was just heartbreaking. So that was a blunder if you missed it by Jabava. Pretty funny stuff by Izodia111 in the uh, in the Twitch chat. I agree. I think Kasparov will do a little better than Jabal. But what's my prediction? Uh, people are asking now. I think Kasparov will probably finish somewhere in the ch in the middle of the pack. Um, yeah, I Izodia. Won't, you're right though. Uh, Izodia11. Uh, Jababa is is a hilarious guy. So his he's self deprecating. He's humble, and I think that just like it makes him a fun person to to talk to, even if he's doing badly. So Jababa's comments were hilarious. I agree. All right, let's do what we do next on the Daily Chess Show, if that's okay with all of you, and go play some Daily Chess games. Now that we have touched on the big news of the day, uh, my feelings, again, to wrap that up, Kasparov will finish in the middle of the pack. Kasparov playing is, he's still the biggest personality in chess until Magnus crosses the line of being known without being known, right? The American who beat the Soviets, the Russian who lost to the computer. Until you cross that line where you're known and people don't even know your name, I don't know Magnus is there yet, so big news to have Kasparov back, and uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and talk about this game here. Um, so let's see here. We've got. Uh, I actually need to kind of fix the board. I don't know why it's why it's uh, why it's kind of small on me. That's a little weird. Let's make this board a little smaller. Um, see if that helps want to fix things before I start analyzing this position that I'm completely lost in so that everybody can can see what's going on. Yeah, I don't understand that. Um, there we go. That'll help. No, it won't. Yes, it will. No, it won't. Huh. Let me let me re let me reset this for everybody and uh Let's make sure that we have a good experience here before we start analyzing. So my apologies for that. Not exactly sure what happened, but we are going to fix it right about now so that everybody is happy. And uh, we're going to put me on top of it, and we're going to start analyzing this game, and it is going to be fun. Let's do it. So what do we have here? We've got a position that I'm completely lost in. Somebody's giving me a jingle. Catch him on the jangle. Uh, okay, let's do it. Um, so I'm losing in this game. This is a tough one. We, you guys have been following this game with Samuel Joshua. Tough one for me. I'm just getting my proverbial bleep handed to me. That's the facts, Jack. And uh, I got no excuses. I got no excuses. So... The last couple moves haven't threatened anything by him. I mean, I, you know, he's not threatening anything here, right? Everybody's defended for the time being, so that's a plus. The problem is this knight is so darn well placed here, right? Knights on knights on f7 guard everything. I, I just swear, you know. Someone said knight on f8. How about can a knight on f7 get some love? You know, what I'm talking about people. Come on, that knight on f7 needs to get some love because he is holding down the fort for Mr. Samuel Joshua. What to do here, yeah? What do we do here? We have the problem of this coordination. I cannot play this one because we have this chick. I cannot move this knight. We have this one, the B3 square. Ay, ay, ay. I have no moves. Perhaps this one. But what does it do? There is no threats here. Sasha. I have no moves here. I mean, like, literally, I should just resign. This, I should just resign this game. That's what I should do. Um, Sleeping Giant, welcome, buddy. You finally made it to a live stream instead of watching on YouTube. Can everyone give Sleeping Giant some love? Right? Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you being here. Um, the um, Stud, Stud Miffin agrees with me. I mean, disagrees with me. He says that Magnus is more recognized than Kasparov. You live in a completely different universe, buddy. I, not only, you, are, you are so wrong about that. And not even like it's a, it's a worthy argument. In your world, Magnus Carlson is more recognized. But it's not even close, dude. Go on the street. I, I challenge you. I don't know where you live. Go to New York. Go to the street. 
and ask people three questions. Do you remember who the American was who played the so like or, or who who are the chess players they know? Who are the most famous chess players they know? I guarantee you, it's Bobby Fischer. Even if they don't say his name, it's the American who beat the Soviets. It's the Russian who lost to the computers. And they maybe, maybe know of like a new world champion kid. Now, his celebrity is growing, right? The Netflix documentary, by the way, phenomenal. If you haven't seen the Netflix documentary, not, not Netflix, but it's on Netflix, the documentary Magnus, I, I, you should go see it. So, I mean, certainly Magnus growing. But, and I, I live in the world of Magnus Carlsen. I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm a professional chess commentator in the era of Magnus Carlsen, not Kasparov. So I appreciate Magnus, believe me. But I'm just telling you, it's, just, it's not even close, dude. Um, it, it's not about Kasparov being the best. But uh, it's, about, it's about the fact that um, Kasparov is more recognized. But Stud Miffin, if this is also your first stream, welcome, dude. Welcome. Thanks for engaging in the chat. Thanks for being here. Um, thanks, for, thanks for showing us some love on the Chess Today show. Uh, Leela03 in Chess TV saw the Carlson documentary. He says or she says it's awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah, it is. I, I agree as well. All right, guys, I know what to do. I'm not going to resign here. I know you guys are frustrated with my level of play here, or you just don't care, and I pretend that you do. That's also totally cool. Um, is there even, like, a trick? Can I even lay a trap here? I mean, I literally have nothing but resigning on my mind, you know, like Sam Smith. I don't have money on my mind. Money on my mind. I do it for, I do it for the love. I don't have money on my mind. <laughs> money on my mind. I do it for, I do it for the love. I don't have money on my mind. Money on my mind. I do it for, I do it for the love. I'm getting my, I, I'm just getting killed in all these games. E-Dog, E-Dog 99, is he in the chat? He was here earlier. He's beating the pants off me right now, ever since I blundered the exchange in this Chess 960 game. And here I should have taken G3, but it's not that it matters. I mean, I have nothing. I have nothing to do here either. I think I'm just going to resign this game. You get me, E Dog. You got it. You win. Resigns. Uh, open up the comments door. Obviously, people are going to come in and be like, "I saw Wrench lose this game live on Chess TV." Maybe I'll say that. I saw Wrench lose this game live on Chess.com/TV. Woot. That's the dumbest thing I've ever written. <laughs> All right. Let's go back. What I, do I have any good games? Okay, I'm going to win this one. I got a pass pawn. I know how to use it. Let's just say it's not my first rodeo. Um, if he will be at the one. Okay. Okay. Okay, we win this game. Duh. We will win this game. I just should. I do not know why Joe does not resign here. I like, uh, I want to have some sort of sexy checkmate, yeah? I want to have the sexy, the sexy one, the checkmate. The Sloan de Piat. I, okay, no stalemate because he has plenty of pawn moves. So if he not resign, I create sexy checkmate net. Da. Okay, so that's my daily chess games. Is it time for us to join another tournament? Should I join another tournament, get some more daily chess games going? I don't think so. I think we got plenty to do here on the Chess Today show. So what have we done? We've checked in with the big news. We've solved the daily puzzle. We've watched me um, lose my 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 daily chess games. Um, you know, as much as as much as humanly possible, I've lost them, and uh, and so that's great. So um, okay, the uh, the other thing I like to do here is is maybe we haven't done a feature feature in a while. I like to either play some of the fans, maybe solve some puzzles. Um, we haven't done a drill in a while. One thing that I was actually, I don't know if you guys saw, I played the title Tuesday on, um, on Tuesday. I played the title Tuesday. And uh, let's look at my game archive. I had, uh, I had this one. This was a funny one. Okay. I just wanted to show that I was able to do the knight and bishop checkmate. This was a blasty McBlasterson. So after winning a piece in the end game, I was nervous and down on time. But only option is to go let him do it. And so now you got the knight and bishop for the king, gobble the pawn. One thing to consider if you don't know, like, the knight and bishop checkmate is if you should not take the pawn, right? Because then you can take it later and reset the 50-move rule. But no reason to do that. One of the things that I try to highlight about the knight and bishop mate is that as difficult as it is, there are some patterns you can kind of put in your brain that will help you 
to solve it. One is the knight does best on the same color square as the bishop. Why? Because when it's on the same color square as the bishop, it controls the opposite color square. So when you watch the knight and bishop work together, the bishop controls the light squares, the knight controls the dark squares, and it, together they that, that allows you to create more of a wall, more of a net. So you're going to see this pattern repeat. A simple move by the bishop creates a scenario where suddenly the knight and bishop have actually controlled the mass majority of the squares available to the king. As, as you push the king into the same color corner as the bishop, remember, you can't mate the king unless he's in the same color corner as your bishop, unless he help mates you. Like, unless he mates himself with a, with a move that's bad, your only way to force checkmate is to get the king into the same color corner as your bishop. Okay? So, the problem is you can't, it's hard to force them there if they know to go to the opposite color corner. So the pattern that I want to show you guys that you should just have totally memorized, I have a video on YouTube that teaches this mating net, starts, the pattern starts as soon as you get the king into the opposite color corner. It's usually a forced, forced mate in 17 moves, roughly, we'll count, but it's either forced mate in 17 or 19. So, but, but the idea of the knight coordinating on the same color square as the bishop, okay, and the bishop helping to sort of be like the sweeper, I like to call it. The bishop kind of just like sweeps the king because the bishop can come in at the last minute from far away. The, the pieces that really need to work together are the king and the knight because they're short range pieces. So let's watch this pattern repeat of the king trying to get opposition against his king. The knight, even when it moves to a dark square, I'm quickly trying to relocate it back to a light square. And I continue this pattern of the king and knight working together, knight being on a light square, as much as possible, because that's where it's most beneficial, controlling the obstacle squares of the bishop, and the bishop coming in really as a sweeper, kind of a push broom, just sort of push the king over to the corner. So this time I bring the knight around. Again, I, I moved him away, but only with the purpose of bringing him back so that I could continue to try to force the king. Again, I'm operating on light squares where my bishop and my knight actually will help control the squares. Look at this wall. Look at this wall I create. Look at this one. Look at this one. His king is trapped, actually. He's already in the corner. Now we come in here. And actually, look how, as, as optically as strange as it is, that's what's counterintuitive about it, is you don't look at this and think wall. But by the way, if his king gets all the way up here, is he getting out? No siree. Cannot go here. Cannot go here. Cannot get out. Look at this wall. So this is key. The problem that the kids have when they solve this one is you are focused on I have to get so close to the king instead of recognizing that your knight and bishop work very well together as they control this wall here. And, and this is really ideal to have in your brain because if the king is even here, he's not getting out. So basically, I've already won. There's, he's trapped. So now it's just a matter of me getting my king in the right position where I feel like I can push him into the corner. So I bring the knight, okay, I actually just improved the wall. Same thing, but I, I recognize this was even easier. And this position is already a forced mate in, this is like forced mate in 15 or 17, okay? It starts this way. I want you to memorize the pattern I'm going to give you right now. This is some serious chess teaching. Hashtag you're welcome, all right? The bishop is the sweeper. It's your push broom. I'm just taking away the square and forcing him. Rule number two. Okay, the bishop is the sweeper, rule number one. No, rule number two. Whenever the king and knight are lined up, the knight must lead the way. Okay? Remember that. When the king and knight are lined up, the knight leads the way. If you ever play this move, you're just repeating. You have no way to force him. So, whenever the king and knight are lined up, the knight leads the way. Okay? This guy makes it very easy for us to see the pattern because this, this international master didn't do anything to really challenge it. I rinse and repeat this idea of, of the lining up, the bishop takes the square, he push brooms the king over with a simple waiting move, the knight leads the way, and we rinse and repeat. Which, by the way, I've been using this new shampoo to help my receding hairline. It's really helping my thick hair. You guys like that? Love that. Love the, the male, male pattern baldness. Hashtag fight the system, okay? You can do it too. Been using this new shampoo. Get some, okay? Anyway, but seriously, look at this. I'm just, I'm just, I'm in heaven here. The knight and bishop wait for the right time. And again, the checkmate is inevitable. So what if he, what if he actually challenged me? What if in this position, when the knight lead the way, we follow Danny's pattern, bishop sweeps, knight leads the way. What if he runs? The pattern you have to know is this. As crazy as this looks, the king is actually not getting out of this net as long as we remember this move at the end of the line. And once again, we have Uncle Sasha's vol. 
there is actually no way out for this guy. Okay, he moves, he moves the king, and we just come in. Once again, we have this wall. He is stuck. He tries to come back, just line up. He goes here, and you go here. And guess what this position is with bishop to c2? Did you recognize it from, uh, from this position? Look at that. I'm actually clicking. You see in the notation? Completely different line, same exact position. You see that? So notice that one of the key things that's sort of counterintuitive is the difficulty of knowing that the bishop can actually help from afar. You have to keep the king and knight together. Where people lose it is they start doing the king and the knight and they bring the bishop back in too soon. You make some sort of silly move and the king just gets out. And, and you haven't actually helped yourself. The bishop doesn't need to come in until the last second, okay? He cleans up. He's like the janitor, okay? He, and, that, and that goes well with my broom reference, all right? He comes in when the lights are turned off. The king and knight have done their job, and he just comes in and, and handles business, okay? The bishop is the janitor. He's just there to clean up, all right? He's stopping this king from getting out. That's all he's doing, all right? And then, and then you push, and then again, the knight would have led the way. It's the exact same position that we had in the game. Uh, okay, I guess if he tries to run out, it's the same. I literally don't even care what he's doing right now. If he does this, I'm just going to move. I'm just going to rinse and repeat with the knight and the king. Bishop comes in. We sweep him like janitor, like this guy who cleans up the kid's garbage in the school, right? This janitor. When is the janitor going to get some love? You know what I'm saying? Come on. All right, there you go, everybody. There is a, uh, there's a knight and bishop checkmate. Not necessarily a feature feature like I normally do, but educational in its own right. I'm going to post a link to the YouTube video. Maybe I'll just try to go there, yeah? Let's go to this YouTube. Wait, is it? Danny Wrench, Knight and Bishop Checkmate. See if I can pull it up. Okay, look at this one. We have it right here. This position ah. is white to play in Checkmate oh, 3. That guy is so loud. Uncle Sasha hates Danny Wrench. There you go. Have a YouTube link. There you go. There you go. Have this one. Uncle Sasha is back here. Okay. Um, all right. Well, hopefully that was useful for anybody that has ever wondered. The knight and bishop mate. So tough. Can it be useful? I think you should practice it. I think coordinating your knight and bishop in that difficult sense is just good for your chess skills. Um, and yeah, I was, uh, it was kind of fun because it actually, when was the chance, when was the last time you get a chance to do a knight and bishop mate? in a real game, right? And I was able to do that, um, so that was a ton of fun. I just wanted to share my experience with you guys, okay? I'm here to share. Now it's your turn to share, okay? Danny, when are you gonna try to get your GM title? Dude, as soon as I have another, as soon as, I, as soon as I'm reborn into the next life. I told you, I was Alexander L. Johan in my past life. I've already been a GM and a world champion. I've been there, done that. Here, now I'm here to commentate. No, I'm kidding. I mean, I got a wife, I got four kids, I got a job that if I let it would take 80 hours a week with chess.com. And we have a ton of fun doing what we do. I just don't have the time right now. I would love nothing more than to try to go get my GM title. Who knows? You know, we just, I need to be able to retire. As soon as you sign up for a diamond membership. <laughs> just kidding. All right. Um, I can't be your teacher. Um, lots of requests for lessons. It's not something I do anymore. I am no longer in the professional teaching market, Hakeem. I appreciate it. I love you. Thanks for the, thanks for the request. Not happening. Um, I uh, say hi to everybody in this. Okay, so go check out the video from this guy, the Danny Wrench guy. When is the Crazy House Championship 2017? The announcement is coming, and the Crazy House Championship will happen. Okay, it is going to happen. Um, we are actually also going to have a Bug House Championship. Right now, it's just not on the top of our priority list, but the prize fund will be increased, and there will be a Crazy House Championship in 2017. I guarantee you that. Going to be a ton of fun and um, very excited for it. So, looks like Akaro's playing. So, for anybody wondering what you're going to do with your life as soon as the Chess Today show ends in about 30 seconds, that's what you're going to do. Go check out Hikaru Nakamura. Um, he is currently playing in the live chess arena. Pull up. Oh, he's taking on Hansen. Say what? Right? Come on, look at this. Oh my God, Hansen got a game. Got a game early. Okay, I guess you guys know what you're doing. Hanson's probably streaming right now. I can ask him on Skype. Be like, yo, Eric, you streaming, brah? I'll ask him. Hikaru's on Skype, too. We should get Hikaru to stream right now.
Hikaru, Hikaru tells me that. Okay. Hikaru says he can get this. He can get me bigger celebrities than Hutch versus Ursula yesterday. Uh, so he's gonna get me another gamer. So, but he says he's gonna go play Hanson right now. Hikaru's a good trash talker. He's gonna go try to crush Eric Hansen. Okay. So this one is over here, yeah? We bring this show to an end and we have a good time. Go watch Hikaru Nakamura and Eric Hansen. It's probably going to be a blast. Looks like Hansen is maybe about to win. Uh, or not. Interesting. Okay, well, either way, um, tons of fun. Go check it out. And uh, that's what you're going to do for the rest of your day on, uh, on chess.com. And thanks for tuning into the Chess Today show. Please uh, go, go subscribe to our Twitch channel. Follow me on YouTube. All that stuff. Lots of fun. And uh, appreciate it, peeps. Out.